Thanks to Linode for supporting this episode of SciShow. You can go to linode.com slash scishow to learn more and get a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. 55 million years ago, just 10 million years after the extinction of nearly all the dinosaurs, Earth's average temperature shot up and fast. This warm period is known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM. We know it was caused by a massive amount of carbon entering Earth's atmosphere, and that this warming happened over a comparatively short time. So the PETM is the closest thing we have in Earth's history to the modern climate crisis. Except. Instead of all that carbon coming from human activity, a 2022 study suggests it could have come from an entire continent splitting apart. The PETM has been a big mystery for paleoclimatologists, who are scientists who study the climate of the Earth's past. During this event, temperatures at the ocean surface suddenly shot up by about 5 degrees Celsius on average, and the ocean acidified to the point that many deep-sea species were wiped out. It's one of the most extreme heating events in Earth's history, and while scientists have been studying it for decades, they still don't know definitively what caused it. They do know that the warming was driven by extra carbon in the atmosphere, and especially extra carbon dioxide. And we know that because the oceans both warmed and acidified. And while many gases can warm the planet, only CO2 dissolves in the ocean to make it more acidic. But it would have taken more than just like a quick burst of gas to cause this kind of warming. In fact, researchers calculated that it would have taken 10 to 15 trillion tons of carbon. That is four to to six times more than what humans have released since 1850. And what we've done already here is enough to start wreaking havoc on the planet. Now, the cause of the modern climate crisis is clear and straightforward. Our world revolves around fossil fuels, and burning them releases gases that warm the Earth. But 55 million years ago, it's not like ancient birds were sitting around burning tons of oil and coal. Instead, for that much carbon to enter the atmosphere naturally, scientists know it had to come from multiple sources. They're just not sure what all of them are. They do know that volcanoes were part of it, but the total amount of volcanism happening at that time only accounts for about a fifth of the carbon. So the bulk of it had to come from somewhere else. And a study published in 2022 might have found where. In their paper, researchers looked at volcanic rocks from sediment cores, cylindrical samples of material drilled from the seafloor. The material in these cores forms as sediment from the water's surface drifts down to the seafloor and builds up over time. So they tell us what sorts of material was floating around in the oceans as far back as millions of years ago. These cores in particular were taken from the North Atlantic Ocean in the 1980s. But they'd basically been sitting around in a warehouse since then, waiting to be analyzed. And when the COVID-19 pandemic shut down most normal research, it was finally their time to shine. Scientists took the opportunity to dive into the archives to dust off these samples. They found that the core sections that came from around the time of the PETM were full of ash deposits, indicating a lot of volcanism. Now, that sounds a lot like support for the theory that the PETM was caused by volcanoes. But when they looked at the chemistry of lava deposits that occurred around the same time as the ash deposits, they found something strange about the chemistry of the lava. Lava deposits from around around the same time as the PETM were oddly high in elements like titanium and magnesium. Eventually, these elements disappeared from the cores, and the rest of the lava deposits from this time looked more like normal lava deposits. But that initial spike of high magnesium, high titanium lava led the researchers to think that some of the volcanism might have come from a different source than normal. And that made them look at the subcontinental lithospheric mantle, which is a deep layer of the Earth between the crust and the mantle. This layer is high in carbon carbonates, minerals with a high amount of carbon and oxygen in them. But here's the weird thing. This layer of the crust normally exists way deeper in the planet than we can get to with conventional tools. So for these metals to have made it to the sediment cores, something must have been happening to take those carbonates from deep in the Earth and throw them all the way up to the surface, where they could eventually drift down to the seafloor. And scientists think that this happened during one particular dramatic geological event the breakup of a supercontinent. Before the continents got to their modern positions, all the land on Earth was bunched up into one enormous supercontinent called Pangaea. Eventually, it split apart in three stages. The last stage formed what is now the North Atlantic Ocean. And that occurred at roughly the same time as the PETM. This was a violent time, and material from deep in the planet could have been brought up to the surface, including those carbonates. And if that happened, a lot of carbon would have been released into the air. Because
because these minerals formed at super high pressures deep in the Earth. So when they reached lower pressures at the surface, they would have broken apart, releasing that CO2. The release of carbon dioxide would have been short-lived, like a really big burp. But in that time, a lot of the carbon would have gotten into the atmosphere. If this is true, it could explain where a lot of the carbon released during the PETM came from. That said, other researchers not involved with the study were quick to point out that the PETM was still likely caused by more than one event. So while the breakup of Pangaea could have been a significant factor, other effects could have put even more carbon into the atmosphere. For example, as the planet warmed, frozen soils called permafrosts could have started melting, releasing their stored carbon into the air. But this research adds another piece to the story. And with Earth's climate changing rapidly and scientists doing their best to learn what this means for our future, understanding extreme warming events like the PETM is more important than ever. This kind of climate research can involve some very big data sets to see how things change over time, and Linode can handle big data sets. This SciShow video is supported by Linode, a cloud computing company from Akamai. Linode can provide high memory servers to work with really big databases to get into large scale projects that require terabytes or more of storage. Linode offers dedicated cloud resources for when you need fast processing of a lot of information. That way, you don't need to compete with other users to access the same server at the same time. Linode can handle the needs of large organizations and researchers working with giant data sets. They'll give you high level performance 24 7. To explore what the cloud can do for you, you can check the link in the description or head to linode.com scishow for a $100 60 day credit on a new Linode account.